Hi everybody, my name is Evan Salerno and I'm an intern for Realize Health and I'm here to talk to you all about cognitive behavioral therapy, which is also commonly referred to as CBT. I'm going to give you a little bit of a college style CBT 101 rundown. For some of you guys who maybe know a little bit about CBT, I hope that you learn something new or strengthen your understanding of it. And for new people to CBT, I welcome you to this lesson. All right, so let us start by discussing what exactly CBT is. CBT is a form of treatment that involves identifying and altering negative thinking styles and behaviors. Many psychologists and therapists call CBT a gold standard of treatment, and that's because of the amount of research behind this form of treatment across a spectrum of issues. In a nutshell, CBT focuses on how events impact us and how we can change our feelings and behaviors by changing our thoughts. The overall goal of CBT, the purpose of it, is to help people cope more effectively, and that's by improving emotional regulation skills. This is commonly used to help people with depression and anxiety, but over the years, research and clinical practice has shown that CBT can help with many disorders. CBT teaches people to develop more rational and positive beliefs, beliefs and attitudes, which leads to positive ways of coping. And why should I care about CBT? Well, we all should care about CBT, because every human being has emotions, thoughts, and actions. So CBT skills and tools can help almost everybody. All right, so now let's talk about how CBT was developed. The two men you see here on the right are Dr. Aaron Beck and Dr. Albert Ellis. Aaron Beck is considered the original father of CBT, and he noticed that some of his patients with depression were not being helped by current treatment approaches. So, inspired by Sigmund Freud, who is known as the father of psychoanalysis, he, Beck dove deep into its origins to see how he can help his patients. And Ellis, who developed rational emotive behavioral therapy, assisted in the development of CBT. Together, the two of them worked to develop CBT to help change these harmful patterns of emotional reasoning. But what is emotional reasoning? Well, we can understand it by starting with understanding negative thoughts. When an interaction occurs, it can be any interaction. Some people will have a negative thought, and that negative thought can lead to a negative emotion, which ultimately can lead to a negative or unhelpful behavior. It is mentioned here in the paragraph that you see on the left, However, it is very important to clarify that the fact that events do not inherently affect a person's mood, but rather the way an event is internalized, perceived, or interpreted by an individual is actually what impacts thoughts and then the mood. So like any cycle, we can use the image of a snowball rolling down a hill to understand how things compound on themselves. Using this metaphor, the bigger the snowball gets, the more negative thoughts we internalize, which leads to more negative feelings and then behaviors. But by changing the negative thoughts early on, we can stop that snowball from getting bigger. CBT practitioners work with their patients in order for their negative thoughts to look like the snowball at the bottom of the right slope that you see here, and for not to look like the snowball at the bottom of the left slope. Now, our founding fathers will be pretty happy with the progression of treatment that CBT has done in clinical practice. Because in, in addition to helping with depression and anxiety, CBT has been shown to help with other disorders, such as substance abuse problems and marital problems. Now, every individual will be a one-of-a-kind case with a therapist, since CBT has a heavy focus on the therapist and patient relationship, where they both work together to find ways that the patient can both understand the developed issues at hand and ways to emotionally regulate. While emotional regulation is a key aspect of CBT, exposure therapy and role play situations are other good forms of treatment that helps the patient develop a treatment strategy. So the DSM is the Diagnosis, Diagnostic, and Statistical Man Manual of Mental Health, and it is currently in its fifth edition. It is the manual that mental health care providers use that has descriptions, symptoms, and other criteria that help identify different mental disorders. Providers use this manual to make sure that their diagnoses are accurate and credible to either help with or reinforce the diagnosis. Now, the DSM connects with CBT because the information criteria and its largest component being suggested forms of treatment all lead to a provider suggesting CBT treatment for an individual. And in some cases, CBT might be the most reputable source of treatment. All right, so now we get to the CBT model. I talked earlier about how every person experiences thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This is often shown in the form of a triangle to highlight these interactions. When a situation occurs, we have thoughts, and depending on those thoughts, we will experience a feeling or an emotion, which ultimately leads to a behavior or an action. One important thing to note about this model is that if one of the aspects gets altered, 
it will necessarily alter the other two. This is an important part of CBT. The therapist and the client work together to create skills to improve emotional regulation by working on changing thoughts. So I have a couple examples with the first one being more drawn out and the second one being more simplified. However, they're both examples that explain the CBT model and how emotional reasoning has changed. This one is about a guy named John who's experiencing heartbreak. So you can read along with me if you like on this paragraph that you see here on the left. But John breaks up with his girlfriend and has followed and has fallen into a rough patch of mood. Because John's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are all linked, there are places John can intervene in the cycle to improve his mood. It is most common to address his thoughts first. For John, changing his thought patterns may help. If a therapist works with John, identifies that he's having thoughts like, I will never find love again, or I am nothing without my significant other, then it makes sense that he will have sadness and hopelessness. But by working on gently changing his thinking about relationship to try shifting his thoughts to there are more efficiency or this will give me more time to help me grow, then his feelings and behaviors will necessarily change too. John's emotions may change from hopeless and worthlessness to mindful and motivated. John's behavior could go from crying and isolating to working on a project or going out with friends. For some clients, it may be helpful to start with an emotion because it can be hard for a person to identify their thoughts. Having help from a provider to help you identify and alter your thoughts with guidance, the other parts of the cycle will instinctively change. So if we look back at the CVT model that has the three parts, we can see in the middle of this paragraph that one vertex is being altered, such as thoughts. John's two thoughts, there are more efficiency, and this will give me more time to grow, are examples of a restructured thought from I will never find love again, or I am worthless without my significant other. So cognitive restructuring that helps the patient, in this case, John, helps him get himself able and aware of coming up with positive behavior and coping styles. This second and more simplified and synthesized example involves dental phobia. Let's read it together. So a person with dental phobia, for example, fears going to the dentist because they believe they will experience severe pain or even death by having a dental procedure. This fear may, may have started with a previous negative experience, perhaps in a childhood. A CBT therapist can work with the person to address the faulty thinking, which says, because I, I had pain with a filling, all dental visits will be painful. Together, the client and the therapist can develop a plan to see dental treatment in a new way and overcome the fear. The mention of the person experiencing death sounds extreme and perhaps a little bit silly, depending on the event, but these are real feelings that people experience. Using the components mentioned earlier, being exposure therapy, emotional regulation, in role play situations, the person can develop a plan which helps them work on their belief that they will experience severe pain or even death by having the dental procedure. Now we can use the same model used in cognitive restructuring with the dental phobia example with assisting somebody in their weight management journey. In the dental phobia example, the event was going to the, going to the dentist. Well, for this example, it is gaining one pound. Based on the event for going to the dentist, there is an unhelpful and helpful thought being, I will be experiencing severe pain and other people share my fear and I will be able to overcome this respectfully. We can see in this example, that the two thoughts are, what's the point? I will never lose weight. And this is just a temporary setback. I'll get there eventually if I stick with it. Based on the thought that arises after the event, a consequence will occur. Now the word consequence has a negative connotation, but is it's understood as just an outcome. So the consequences for the unhelpful thought and helpful thought for the dental phobia example were, the fear will be overcome and there will be a proud feeling afterwards, and the individual will experience a distressing visit. For this example, the consequences are reduced effort and increased or same effort in accordance with the thought that came after the event. Now with the team at Realized Health being here to help you on your journey, whether that be weight management or chronic pain, you will likely come across a segment that incorporates cognitive restructuring with CBT. Now we're gonna end this presentation by talking about problem solving and helpful tools. As we know, the psychologist and patient work together to help the patient develop adapt adaptive coping strategies. However, these strategies are due to a specific target behavior. This target behavior is unique to the patient and can range from smoking, self-harm urges, emotional eating, and more. A problem also known as target problem, which is also known as a target behavior, is identified and possible solutions are generated. 
these possible solutions get narrowed by what becomes the most effective. So when a solution is found and starts to become implemented, it is important to be able to continue implementing that solution. To help with this, there are a variety of helpful tools that can be used. Here are some of them, which you can see on the right side of the screen. Most of these skills utilize social support from friends and patient psychologists, with check-ins being highly encouraged, as well as active and mindful tools, such as homework assignments and a continued practice of skills to help with positive behavioral change and growth. Whew. So that was a lot of information that we just covered. Let's go over a little bit of a summary, a recap of everything we discussed. So we discussed that CBT is a treatment that is used for helping many psychological disorders and involves identifying and altering negative thinking styles. So who were the fathers of CBT? Albert Ellis and Aaron Beck were the fathers, and Dr. Beck was inspired to research the foundations of CBT after his patients were struggling with negative thinking patterns and were not getting better. Now, we got to understand the importance of negative thoughts and emotional reasoning and thinking patterns by seeing the image of the two snowballs rolling down a hill. As mentioned before, CBT practitioners work with their patients in order for their negative thoughts to look like the snowball at the bottom of the right slope and for it not to look like the snowball that we saw on the bottom of the left slope. We got to see that CBT has helped with many psychological problems such as depression, anxiety, substance use disorders, and more. And some components seen in CBT are exposure therapy, emotional regulation, and role-playing situations. We got to understand a little bit and learn about the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which is commonly referred to as the DSM, and it is used by healthcare providers to help them to make credible and accurate diagnoses and diagnosing mental disorders, as well as suggesting treatment with CBT as a form of treatment and is sometimes the most reputable source of treatment. We got to see the CBC CBT model which was looked at by describing an individual's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, which are all connected. It's commonly seen in the form of a triangle and are all connected. And by changing one vertex of the triangle, the chain necessarily changes the others. The CBT model, which we saw in John's heartbreak and in the dental phobia example, starting with John, we can see that by changing one vertex, such as John's thinking, the other two traits can instinctively change and can be helped by a provider to help a person alter their other traits with guidance. Now, John's thoughts earlier being more efficiency, this will give me more time to grow, are examples of a restructured thought from, I will never find love again, or I am worthless without my significant other. Now, the CBT model can be seen in showing that the person with dental phobia uses CBT to cognitive reconstruct an event. In this case, visiting the dentist is the event which is seen later by an unhelpful or helpful thought, and that is reciprocated with its respective outcome. This was also seen in the example with someone who had an event where they gained one pound while on their weight management or weight loss journey. We lastly dove into problem solving skills and helpful tools. Problem solving skills incorporate five skills that get the patient to implement an effective solution to their target problem. Along with the problem solving skills, we see many helpful tools with the majority skills utilizing social support for friends and the patient psychologist with check-ins being highly encouraged, as well as active and mindful tools such as homework assignments and a continued practice of skills to help with positive behavioral change and growth. And that is your college style CBT 101 run through. Along with studying CBT and being exposed to it on a personal level, here are some sources that I used for this presentation. So feel free to check out some of them and I hope you enjoy this presentation and hopefully you learned something from it. Thank you.